Praise the Lord. God is good tonight. We're glad to be with you back at church on Wednesday night for the first time in over two months. We are very blessed to be here and to be able to honor our Lord. And Mom is running the camera. I appreciate her doing that tonight. And she's going to pray for us here in just a few minutes. But we're glad you're with us tonight. And just uh, pray that you, you will be ministered to and send any needs and requests. And we'll go over just a few announcements for us here in just a moment. We do want to pray for us as we got started. We've had a few needs that have come in. And we're going to go ahead and bring those to the Lord. So Mom is going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight with gratefulness in our hearts that you love us and that you care for us, Lord. And we pray that we care for one another and that you'll heal our country that's been so broken up and so hurt. We pray that you'll heal us as a nation, that we'll pull together and work on our problems together. Bless us as a nation to do that, Lord. And just help our president be with him as he leads us. Just touch him and help him, Lord. Give him wisdom to lead us and all of our leaders. We pray for everyone and all of our law enforcement people. We pray for them and we pray for all of our first responders and all the people working in our hospitals. And we pray for, we just pray for our nation as a whole. We pray for everybody. Lord. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll be with our brother and sister Christians all over the world. And we pray for the Jewish people, that you'll be with them. And Lord, we pray a special prayer for uh, uh, Linda and her family as they go in for Stevie tomorrow, that you'll just be with them, that you'll give them a good outcome. You'll bless everything that's done. Just work it out. Bless everything that's done as you do your will, Lord. We pray. And we pray for Dwight, that you'll touch him at home with his head, that you'll touch him and be with him and deliver him from the chaos. Just, just work in his life. And bless him. We pray for Allie, that her, that her foot will heal quickly. Lord, just bless her foot to heal quickly and her be back, back to what she wants to do soon. Just touch and help her guide. And give her whole family, give them all a touch tonight, a spiritual touch and a physical touch. Bless her family, Lord. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, for Sherry. With her, we thank you so much for the good praise report that she's back at work. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray she continue to work for and help her. And we pray for Brother Gary and Ruth out camping that you'll be with them. And we pray for Mary Lou that you'll just be with uh, Mary Lou and her family and touch and help them and uh, be with her and touch her uh, shoulder, help her to bend properly and help her to get back to the use of it and touch her knees, Lord, and be with her. Just bless Mary Lou and help her, Lord. And uh, again, we pray for Lou Rick that you'll just be yes, with her. Yes, Lord, help him, be with his whole family, work with yes, him, touch him and help him, Lord. And God, and we thank you for all these things, Lord. Bless our service tonight. And anoint Nathan and give him your favor as he brings our message. Just touch us and God us. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tonight we're going to sing just a little bit for us. And just a second, trying to get this around. Gonna get the camera set up for us here, and we're going to sing just a little bit, and then we'll share with us. We'll talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit tonight, and with that in mind, in these troubled days. Reminded how much we need the Holy Spirit. And so we want to invite him. Can you just invite him tonight to minister to, to your need and also to the needs of our world?
come, Holy Spirit, into this house tonight. We love you and thank you for it. In the world we live in, we're reminded that we have troubles. People don't always treat each other right. And circumstances happen beyond our control. But we know there's coming a day when we're all, we're all types of, of uh, nations and races and, and tongues will be together in heaven forever. And we'll, we'll sing about that for just a few moments tonight. What a day that will be, is this song. <laughs> And I'm Nathan. Sharing with you tonight, we'll be talking about the Holy Spirit. How are we going to make it in these days? The Holy Spirit. And just before we get into that any further, though, we'll mention just a few um, things for us. Uh, Sister Atlanta speaks Sunday morning, so if you can make it here or tune in, please be here for that. Sunday morning, the I guess seventh. Um, also, for Father's Day weekend, I'm not sure the exact details, Friday or Saturday night, we'll probably have Gary's going to put something together, and uh, Pastor Gary and the crew will, will have us here for the men, it'll be a men's time, and so we look forward to that for Father's Day, and then Atlanta's looking to put together a movie night in the, around the weekend, uh, well, I think the following weekend, last weekend of June, so we'll look forward to all those things here for the church, and um, so we going to share with you tonight and I just encourage you generally on Wednesday nights what we've done in the past is we allow folks to share a little bit more and uh, you actually have a mom mic back there mom don't you 
And uh, so if you want to, you can put that on maybe and answer some questions or pass around as we need to. And uh, if you want to, uh, where you are, if you want to type in an answer to these questions or kind of type in some thoughts, we encourage that. It kind of helps, probably it will help you to track along with it and also help us too to know uh, where things are. So uh, just let us know maybe some answers to some of these questions and some of these thoughts. We we'll really want to dig in. Do we have any testimonies from anybody tonight? Yeah, yeah. I was I was just going to testify about our trip um, to yeah. France about how the Lord was with us. That um, you know, so many things could have gone wrong because we went like we weren't aware when we planned the trip that the Corona was even going to be out there. You know, like it was because we I think we planned it in the first week of January, but the Lord worked it out where when we got to France that um, we were able we were safe and we were able to do the things that we had planned to do. You know, the trip worked. You know very very well and you know the, the following week the week before we were there and then the week after we were there a lot of things were closed almost everything that we were going to be at and so even though it was just a trip you know a, an educational fun trip um, the Lord still worked it out you know where we could enjoy it and where we were protected you know from um, you know it was it was very peaceful and calm and I just, you know, I knew, I knew he was with us. And of course, you know, everybody was afraid we couldn't come back, but you know, everything was fine. Our flight, we made all of our flights, even though the CDC was there. <laughs> so, but I mean, it was pretty miraculous because so many things could have gone wrong that didn't go wrong. Everything was so smooth. And you know, I just thank everybody for their prayers because it really could have been bad, but it, it was it was a good, you know, it was a good trip and, and uh, a safe trip, so. Praise God. We didn't, didn't get sick or anything, so that was good. Praise so, God. My sister is testifying that God bless them on their trip to France. They had a successful trip even right before all this hit with the virus and took care of all every step of the way. So we praise God. He protects us in, in all our travels. Um, amen. Anything else? All right. Yeah, we hope you can be with us as we get started back up on Wednesday nights and Sunday morning, Sunday nights as well. We Joy having you out with us on Facebook, or you can be back with us. It is a precious time just to gather together with, with the saints and with everybody and, and minister. So we invite everybody to be back with us. We're taking good precautions, keep trying to work to keep everybody safe here, doing the extra cleaning and, and the extra things that, that we're, we need to do. So we uh, encourage everybody to be with us soon. All right. And we also have a testimony here. We'll go on ahead and share with us. We're in Ezekiel tonight, if you want to follow along in the Bible. Ezekiel 37. This is a very famous passage of Scripture. The Valley of Dry Bones. How? How can this happen? How can anything that comes from something like what we're reading the holy spirit the holy ghost he comes on the scene and while you may be turning and looking there i uh, wanted to ask the question just for you to ponder tonight what do you like to create what is something you like to do artistically and create and so if you want to type that in and for our folks here anybody have something you like to create and just some ideas that was going to put down uh put down for us some people like to Draw or do other things. What do you like to create? Some little decoration for the house. Decorations for the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. It takes a lot of skill to do that. A skill I don't really have. <laughs> a lot of patience. A lot of patience too to create something. I would, this is unrelated. I was watching a, a little deal, a little documentary on Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan is a famous martial arts movie actor and uh, he was talking about, you know, all the scenes in his movies that are pretty amazing fight scenes that he puts together. He says, you know, a lot of people think, wow, you're just that good that you can do it. He said, no, a whole lot of people can do it. It's just having the patience to go through 100 takes or so to get it right. And that's oftentimes true. It's not always just the talent that's there. It's the patience to make it through and to, to be willing to try again and again to get better at something. So, 
Anybody else? Anybody else like to create? Uh, like desserts. Desserts. Like cooking. to make, make, yeah. them, make them, try to make them sort of pretty. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that was one of the things that I had down. Cooking is definitely an, an artistic creation that, that people make. And if somebody were here tonight that he likes to hunt and fish, John, John, I'm going to be here. He's here. He likes to talk about it. I was going to say taxidermy. We could have some of that. And um, or other things that people like drama, people like to do plays and, you know, write. Uh, mm, Atlanta, yeah, singing, music. and She likes plays, too. Yeah, plays, absolutely. Things like that. Creativity, yeah, absolutely. We've got a lot of creative people in our church, and if you're watching, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to create. And the, the point I was having driving with this as we get ready to read these verses is even when we're creating stuff, we're making stuff from items that are already here. In other words, if you take a drawing and you draw it, you're taking the paper and the, the, the marker or paint or whatever you're doing, and you're drawing something from that. Or if you're taking a cookie, you're taking uh, ingredients that are already present. And music, you're playing notes, you know, you're putting together notes that you know have been played many times before. But the beautiful thing about God is, is that when something really new, really different needs to be done, he creates it all new. From this earth, the Bible says, God made it from nothing. And the, the beauty of it is, is that he can do new things in us too. When we need creativity for the things that we're looking to create, well, how is that possible, the Holy Spirit? Sometimes we feel pretty dead. And I want to read this passage, though. This is in Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 3. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Father God, we ask that you bless your word, use it for our hearts tonight, that we might truly go out and live your word in these days of need. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What do we need God to, to create in us? We'll talk about a few things, but maybe you could even put that down. What do you need God to create you and you, something special? Uh, maybe it's a, a just something totally different in, in you, maybe from a different way of, of life, a different skill that you need. Maybe you need strength to do what you're already doing. Maybe you just need words to say. Um, sometimes we just need to, something new to say to someone in these days where words, do, they do matter. They matter quite a bit. And uh, we want to encourage people and build them up toward Jesus in, in our words while the Holy Spirit has an answer. And Ezekiel had God with him right here. But even with God with him, what Ezekiel had was when he had the dry bones, dead and long gone, even he wasn't sure what to say. Even he wasn't sure what was going on. But God wasn't done working with him just yet. He wasn't done with him. There have been times in my own life that I uh, have come to a place where it's like, is God finished working with me? When I left the church as a youth pastor, I would have liked to have stayed longer, but it was time to go. It was time for me to step away. And sometimes you feel like maybe maybe it's just, you feel like maybe the good stuff is behind. You know, I didn't go into another ministry position immediately after that. It's like, well, is God done? And then sometimes, and then another time when I hurt my back, as many have heard the testimony before, but to share it, it was a dark time. And I would lay down and I would be in a kind of a half sleep, half awake, probably due to the drugs I was taking for the pain at that time. And you, you, it's really dark sometimes. You really feel it and really the enemy can push you in at a time like that and, and just, you get the idea, is God done with me? Is this, is, this all, is this all I've got to look forward to? But I'm thankful that just as God wasn't done with the dry bones, he wasn't done with me and he's not done with any of us just yet. He's got something for us that he wants to bring and create in us. He wasn't, he's not done with us. And the word for the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament is the Ruach, which as we talked a little bit about that on Sunday, you're talking about the wind and the breath. 
And as long as there's those things, there's life. Nothing's impossible. And the Holy Spirit wants to do many things. God himself wants to do many things in us and, and through us to, out to the people who need it. So what are some things that the Holy Spirit can do in us? I love him. reading in Genesis. If you look in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible says this. If you're following along and you go all the way back to the beginning of your Bible, and you go into Genesis 1 and verse 2, we have a however technical side of it, Mom. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. All right. As long as that red light button's going, I guess we're going. <laughs> All right. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And just like I was saying, it was very dark and very, it didn't look like much was going to be happening at the beginning of those times. But guess what? When the Spirit's present, when He's hovering over, there's something, something good is going to happen, even if it's pretty dark right then. God, the Holy Spirit, was there to create something new. Many of you know I'm a, I do the, the waste coordinating too. And I'm with the, in Logan County here, I'm what's called the solid waste coordinator. And one of the things I do with is recycling. And so just kind of throw it out to our audience. And, and what are some things that we recycle commonly? I get to kind of put this hat on for just a moment. Paper. Paper. Paper is a big one. That's, that's probably that and cardboard, which is related. Uh, those are probably two of the biggest things we take in in our recycling center. So. Plastics. Plastics. Mm -hmm. What about cans? Cans. Aluminum. Absolutely. Aluminum. Aluminum is, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't bring as much money as it has been, but it's still definitely there. Brings in money and steel. Brings in some a little bit, very little bit, but it brings in a little. All those things recycled, yeah. We take all that in at the recycling center, and you probably can think of some other, many other things recycled too. I put down, well, really everything can recycle if you work at it, but we mentioned some of the common ones here. And, and just kind of going back to what we're saying, science tells us, and what they like to say is that everything is recycled and stuff comes from stuff that's already existing. So when something is, is um, seems to pop up new, it's from something that was there before. But God is above all the laws, and he made the laws, and he did, he's doing something, he did something new on the earth, and he's doing something new, uh, even in, in the um, things that are going on. And all that is made was made through the power of God acting on it, and not by chance. And only he can do something new, but the awesome thing is, he wants to do something in us to help us to, to do the work that, he, that we're called to do. Now, I love this passage of Scripture. This is in Exodus 31. Several Scriptures we're bringing to you tonight. Exodus 31 and verses 1 through 4. The Spirit comes, and you think, you know, we made the earth, and sometimes we know God is there. For, for so many, we know that God is real, but does He actually want to come and do something for us? Yeah, the big picture where he made the heavens and the earth, he made new things, but does he want to do something new in me? Yes, he does. In this passage, Exodus 31, in verses 1 through 4, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Benzil, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and understanding and knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, and, and, and more, if you continue on in this passage. This man that Moses was working with to build some of the holy things of God, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit to do his work. It wasn't just for the big things, or even just, just to say, well, they would have a preacher, you know? God definitely anoints preachers. I've been at the church here for some time now, and I was raised in this church, and we're about the next year we celebrate our 30th anniversary here on the site. And praise God for that. And um, we, uh, I've been coming for a lot of those years here, going all the way back pretty well toward the beginning. And um, my family, too, we, we've seen a lot of things happen. And uh, it's good. It's been a lot of good things. And, uh, but uh, the, the, the point is, 
is that I need God's grace. I need the Spirit of God to see something new because we can be seeing the things that are old, but sometimes we don't always see the new. So that's why we look at some of the construction projects that we look at, or we look at doing maybe some, some different way, look at different things that we can do, ways of doing things, missions, others to do next. Because in the world changes, we change, and, and we want to see that, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard, especially if you've been at it sometimes for a while. Uh, but many will work as preachers. They need the ability to work doing other things. And what we just read, the Holy Spirit can give us success at jobs that we need to do, but we might not really want to, and we may not know how to. And he can, he can give us the, the promotion to something else. And so many times it's working where we are. There is a plan for you to work wherever you are, whatever we're doing, whatever place we're called in. As the old song says, we can write in the corner right where we are in that spot. And it's a, it's a good thing. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit can anoint that. He can use that for something good. And we, we have to believe that if something new needs to be done, the Spirit can give the creativity to do that. And I, I'm just grateful that he, He's willing to do that even in the hard jobs. I mentioned sometimes there's jobs we don't want to do. They was a, the other job that I do with the trash is a particularly difficult job, I and mean, I don't want to gross people out. But I was having the day to clean out an old freezer that someone had dumped, and so you can get it was full of old food, and I'll just leave it at that. We won't go further with that. So uh, I'm glad to get that out of my truck. We'll just put it that way. But uh, uh, sometimes it's just jobs that are they're not the most tasteful jobs. And the point is, the Spirit can be with you in that. He doesn't take a vacation or do it's beneath him to not want to help you in that. He wants to help us in everything that we're doing. And that's really one of the big points we're getting. And the Holy Spirit, you know, we think of it, and sometimes even as Pentecostals, we think of the Holy Spirit as someone who meets with us in church, or, or sometimes even an it that meets with us in church. He is a person, and he wants to help us in all of our daily life and what we're doing. And uh, we can boldly ask God to do something new. There's new needs today in our world that we live in. There's a, there's a, a new troubles for sure, and new new things that we have to work at. Sometimes some old old troubles and wounds that we've got to work at. And uh, the Holy Spirit has an answer for all of it because people. Let's just put it this way: people have tried a long time to find answers to some questions, and it's hard. And we understand though there is an answer through the Spirit. That's why we've got to turn to Him more and more in these days. So I just encourage us, let's be people willing to, to see the Lord do something new in us through the power of the Spirit. All right. I love this passage, so that was one. This is two we're going to mention, and we've mentioned three different things tonight. You can probably think of many others. This is in Judges chapter 14. Several verses tonight, but follow along or catch up with them later. That's great. We need the power of the Spirit for strength. We need His power to come with us so that we have the ability to do it. Yes, we may need to do something new, but we don't have the strength to do it. What can we do? In Judges 14, verses 5 and 6, it says, it tells the story, a little part of the story of Samson, a man the Holy Spirit used for strength. So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards. Of Timnah. Now, to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. Now, I'll stop right there. And uh, that's to say to us today that to face the opponents we have, we can have strength. We can have strength. And so, just to ask him the question for our folks here, maybe you, what do we need strength for? What do you need strength for in your life? Maybe it's not to tear a lion in two, but maybe it's a strength to do something else. What do, you, what do we need strength for? Sometimes just for forgiveness, forgiving people. Absolutely. Forgiveness is one of the hardest things. We need strength to forgive. Amen. Anything else? Just strength to 
strength for the task that mm-hmm. the Lord wants us to do. You know, sometimes we're just, I mean, physically tired mm-hmm. in this body mm-hmm. and we need strength to, you know, to, like we're being, we, we're lazy sometimes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're all getting older, right? That is a universal <laughs> thing. Nobody goes the other way, goes backwards. There's a TV, old TV show, I think, where that happened, but that's the only place it happens. <laughs> so we all need the strength as we age to do what God has for us and we do get tired. Amen. Amen. Other things you might could think of and, and put those down for us. But we know we can have strength from the Lord. He was, um, in fact, Samson did things so well that a lot of people today, there was a professor that taught up at Western. Basically, stuff like what Samson did wasn't even real. It was so much. But no reason to think that. It, well, first of all, his word is true. And second of all, when the Spirit comes on us, we can do what we got to do, even if it's impossible otherwise. Even if it's unbelievable otherwise. Mm-hmm. And uh, God, in fact, often did it in spite of Samson. Because Samson didn't always, if you read the story, didn't always live the best life. Most people know this, the part about Delilah, where she comes on the scene and it's not so good. But uh, in those times with Samson, God could still use him and work with him. None of us are perfect. We all have our issues, but we're willing to submit to the Spirit. And give, give ourselves to him. Even a little bit more, he can use us. He can use us. And um, it's a, I, I can tell stories about it for myself. That um, some of the hardest times I've had, God gave me the strength because he knew I needed it. When I was in college, the hardest semester probably I had in all my years of college, I was not sick once. And that's not, it's a little bit unusual for me. To say that I wasn't sick, God got me through it. I praise Him for that. I praise Him for the times that He He delivers. And sometimes we need we, we have to realize we need outside help. The strength is not going to come from us. So many people are struggling with addictions or struggling with substances, and they they tear apart our world very much. And the strength is not going to be in in any of us or in you if that's if they, if, if anyone's struggling with that. It's not in us, but through him, we do have the strength, and we submit ourselves to the Spirit. There's more than enough strength. Just like Samson had the strength to tear tear up a a roaring lion, we have the strength to tear up the devil's attacks against us in the name of Jesus. So, we own the Spirit. Submit ourselves to him for strength. We may need to say that prayer when we're sagging. We may need to say that prayer or, or when we lack energy, and he's good to do it. He's good to give us strength. Amen. All right. Now, I did want to come back to the story of Ezekiel because we started off there where Ezekiel went to the valley of dry bones. God brought him there and it seemed like there was no way out. So we're going to go back to Ezekiel 37. Kind of dovetail this just a little bit here. Because when we're faced with something that's not possible, these bones can't do that that Ezekiel saw. He even said, Lord, you know, he wasn't willing to say this right up front. Oh yeah, I know they can live. Well, you know, Lord. He 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 has to kind of defer on that one. It's a little it's a little hard to believe. But when the Spirit speaks through us is what we're getting at tonight. The dry can come back to life. The desert can bloom. As the Bible says, we put that little poster up on our wall at church. It rains in the desert. The desert blooms with Jesus. He'll give us the very words to say to make it happen. In Ezekiel 37, verse 9. And also he said to me, me being Ezekiel, prophesy to breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to breath, say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet in an exceeding great army. Through the power of breath, of the breath of the Spirit, Ezekiel was able to breathe out words that brought these bones back to life. And it's good that he will touch the very words that we say. The tongue is untamable, the Bible says. It's hard to watch what we say. I've gotten myself into trouble many times. It might not be something you would want to post up on a Facebook post there with all the times you've said something you didn't need to say, but it's true. And and we, we need 
have to look at it, but uh, there's been times when it's the Korean folks are fond of early morning prayers, and there's been times that I want I need to say something for that. They would call me to, to share like I'm sharing now, and I'm not necessarily a morning person, and I wasn't sure if I could string two sentences together coherently. I was still probably feeling like I was in dreamland somewhere else. But you know what? God is still good. The Spirit still gave me strength for even something like that. And uh, what is the time we need something to say? Let me throw that out for us. What is the time we do need something to say as Christians or whatever? Throw that out for us. Well, to witness to somebody. To witness to somebody, absolutely. People need to hear the truth. Um, if you know you've had a friend that lost a loved one, you really need some, you know, wisdom mm -hmm. on what to say to give them, you know, help them have comfort and, mm -hmm. and be a witness too. But you know, sometimes it's hard to find the right words to comfort someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could hear that as the words to comfort someone if they've lost a loved one. That's very true. That's that's a time when. Wow, what do you say to someone in a case like that? It's hard to say, I've been there, because many times we hadn't, and sometimes it's like, you want to say something really good, but it just seems like everything has just been, we come up short. But the Holy Spirit can help us absolutely know what to say. Anything else? And when somebody says something hateful to you. Absolutely, something hateful. Because it's hard not to want to answer back someone the way they answer us. I, I deal with phone calls and people were like, even this week I've had a little bit of that. And, um, it's not always pleasant, but we've got to be, the Lord has to help us. And he does, he will help us. I know I've seen it. Yeah. And we can think of other times, maybe in our jobs, we need something to say, it's, you know, intelligent. Maybe for our family. A family is a big one because that mm -hmm. kind of puts a lot of it together, mm -hmm. some of the things that were said tonight. Um, there'll be definitely that time at one point or another, probably sooner rather than later, that we'll need a word to talk to, to answer them. But the Holy Spirit can give a word to us. And I, I, I just want to encourage us not to be silent in, in these times, but to let the Spirit speak through us what needs to be said. So there's nothing they need to be said. There may not be anything that we have to say, but if he would say something to us, that we can do that. All right. How's our technical side looking? I think it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So we'll head toward winding this down tonight. But if you ever thought about this, many people would love to have a trainer, like a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. So there's a way you're just getting in better shape or to get more muscular or whatever the case might be. We'd love to have a personal trainer or maybe a coach to learn how to play a sport. A lot of people have that for, for different sports, football or golf or whatever it might be. They'll have a, they'll have a trainer for that. And sometimes people will also have a, you know, a, um, all kinds of other different types of people or a tutor. Oh, how about that? That's a big one, having a tutor to learn mm -hmm. uh, a particularly difficult subject. Uh, we People pay good money for, for folks like that. And the beautiful thing about it is in Joel 2.28, because of Jesus coming to us, we can, the Holy Spirit is for everyone. And so all people have access to what we're talking about tonight, the power of the Spirit to do whatever needs to be done. So it's very practical. There are very practical things the Holy Spirit wants to do. And not just like a coach on the outside or a tutor on the outside, but inside of us. He wants to be that one. He wants to be that one guiding us and directing us. We can do even greater things than Samson or Ezekiel did. And the only way, though, is the Holy Spirit. He's how we're going to make it. And so the question is, will we give our lives to him and make, make good decisions to turn our lives to the Holy Spirit? That's, we just had the, the what we're asking and, and hoping folks can do with it is, is in these days of trouble we can turn ourselves more. It's not good, it's not something that happens all at once. We turn ourselves more over to the Holy Spirit to direct us 
and all that we say and do and to do it in his power too. Not only is he telling us or helping us to know what to do, he's helping us do it too and be successful at it. And since he's helping us do it, he needs to get all the glory. God needs to get all the glory. Since the Holy Spirit is God, the third person of the Trinity, he will get the he should and, and will get the glory. We just need to decide what we want, how we want to be a part of that. All right. So I just encourage anyone that's watching, whatever we're going through, that we can't have more of the Holy Spirit with us. And I want to pray for us a couple of different things for us, but not just yet. Did, did it, for our folks here, do we have any final comments on what we've said tonight? That sounds good and we'll give it give it to the Lord we ask Father God for a couple of things Lord we just ask in our daily lives there's for us here you want to come and be more active with us day by day every day and our getting up and the, the, the things that seem kind of normal routine that Lord you'll help us to be full of the spirit even in doing these things dear God um, I pray this for, for all of us, dear God. I know I need it, and Lord, there's many that need this in the routine, that it won't just be the things that have always been, but instead guided by the Spirit into something even better, something maybe new that you want to do. And I, I pray for that too, Lord. You may want to do something totally new in us. I just pray that you give us the understanding that if we need to ask for something impossible, just like Ezekiel did, dear Lord, the army can stand up. The army of dry bones can come to life. And I just pray that for everyone that needs something new to happen, that the impossible can happen through them in Jesus' name. Maybe they need a new birth, a new life, to be born again and be saved. And, and, to, and maybe they need to turn their lives to you, rededicate themselves to the Christian walk and to serving you, Lord. I just pray this in the name of Jesus, that if there's anyone that the Spirit is drawing tonight, that you draw them in to be saved, dear God. We ask, dear God, that you deliver um, any who need a healing. Lord, we believe that just as Jesus walked the earth, the power of the Spirit was there to heal the sick. You can heal. We pray that tonight for anyone that needs that. Maybe they need an impossible miracle, dear God, in their bodies or in some other area. We pray that for them, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, that that miracle come and happen. And Lord, I just thank you for, for us here tonight, dear God, at the church. I just pray your blessings be on each one, that we might take your spirit with us to someone that needs it. We, we're desperately in need as we go out there, dear God. And these days where we couldn't be afraid, we will trust in you, dear Lord, and trust you for good in all that's going on. We just thank you for it. And we just ask that you in every way be glorified, be honored, Lord. We bless you tonight. We just give you praise. Because where you are, just tell the Lord how much you love him. Just invite the Spirit to work and just invite his presence. Lord, we just invite you to go with us as we go back out into our, our day, our, our daily lives, and we'll do something that matters for you. We thank you and love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray your blessings and your peace come, your face shine on us, dear Lord as we go our different ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can flip the camera back. Well, don't run off the air. Never mind. Uh, but um, we do love you. Encourage you just to send us a note. Let us know what, uh, what's going on for you. And uh, we love you very much. And we really hope to see you next time. Come visit us at the church, 25 Rock Lane in Russellville, Kentucky. And we'd love to have you be a part with us, and we'll see you next time.